If you think about the long road that Peloton has been riding down here, what do you think about the new path it has ahead of it? It looks like there's some optimism finally coming back to the stock. Yeah, definitely, Shanali. I mean, uh, definitely an encouraging uh, fourth fiscal fourth quarter print. I think the problem with Peloton so far is that they've been trying to do too many things at once. So they've been chasing subscriber growth while also trying to cut costs. And that really has not worked out. So what we've really seen now is kind of this optimization on profitability with strong cost discipline. Uh, and that's really paying off. We saw that in a pretty solid fourth quarter print. Uh, but more importantly is the... Uh, guidance for fiscal 2025, where the adjusted EBITDA forecast from the company is almost twice that of consensus estimates. And that's really because they're cutting down on marketing spend and they're really focusing on right-sizing uh, the, the cost base of the company. And that's really bearing fruit at this point. You look at this uh, stock over the longer term, Geetha, and it was trading for more than $160 at one point. Okay, that was during the lockdown. Everybody was on the bike. But now it's less than $4. Um, what's, what's your take on the fair value of Peloton in a normal world where we're free to leave our homes? Yeah, it's, that's a really, really good question, Matt. And I think the problem with Peloton is, yeah, despite the, the results this morning and the solid uh, earnings kind of forecast, the problem with this company, and it's always kind of been the uh, been the problem, is the, the lack of sustainable demand. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the visibility on the top line is extremely limited. And the company kind of spoke to this, right? They spoke about, uh, you know, not being able to get new subscriber growth, the connected fitness market, while Peloton is obviously the leader in the connected fitness market, has strong, a very, very strong brand. They've kind of tapped out at about 3 million subscribers. And the problem for them is not just not having new subscriber growth, it's that they're actually churning. Uh, they're losing their existing subscribers. So in the most recent quarter, they lost 75,000 subscribers. They're guiding to losing over 250,000 subscribers in fiscal, uh, you know, 2025. So, so, you know, as we kind of look at valuation and you look at this company longer term, uh, I'm not really sure there's a sustainable path when it comes to demand. Uh, and so while they would have short term, you know, a, a short term profit bump, maybe even short term positive fee cash flow, as we kind of map out the long term path, the strategic direction still remains unclear. Remember, also, they're still searching for a, a new CEO. Mm. Uh, so there are a lot of lingering questions with this company.